What up, pork chops, and welcome to another week of Mountaintop Kids Church Online. It is good to be back, man. If you are here in person or if you are watching this video by yourself online, man, straight up, you are VIP. Very important person. Actually, very important pork chop. <laughs> Even better. Anyways, man, I'm excited. We got some big things in store. I feel like I say that every week, but it's so true, man. Every single week. I just, I love hanging out with you guys, man. So, some big things about to happen. You ready for this? <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, here's the deal. First things first today, we are going to play a little game I like to call Night Princess Frog. <laughs> yeah. Night Princess Frog. So, I am going to do one of three moves. I'm either going to be the Brave Knight. I'm going to be the Princess or I'm going to be the frog. And I don't know how to do a frog, so I'm just going to do this. Yeah, that was a pretty good frog, right? Yeah, all right. Now, I'm going to count down from five, and then I'm going to do one of these moves. You watching this video have to do one of these moves too. And if you do the same move that I do, you win. But if you do a different move, then I win. <laughs> I don't know what I win, but I make this game up, so I'm, I'm going with it. Anyways, man, it's about to get real. We are going to play a couple rounds of Night Princess Frog. Are you ready? Yeah. Turn to the person next to you and say, it's about to get real. Boom. All right, here we go. Five, four. Remember, you have to do one of these three poses. Three, two. What am I going to do? One, princess. Yeah. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. I'm a good-looking princess. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, did you do what I did, man? If you did the princess, then great job. You won. But if you did the frog or the knights, then uh, uh, better luck next time, pork chops. All right, here we go. Round two. Cinco, foro, three, dos, uno. Do you like my Spanglish counting, by the way? All right, do your pose and knight. Ooh. Did you do the knight? I don't know why this is a knight, but I feel like that's something the knight would do. Anyways, did you do the knight pose? If you did, then hats off to you, bro. You won. But if you didn't, then again, we still got like two more rounds, so maybe you'll get it. All right, all right. Good job, good job. <sighs> Round three. You ready? Are you, re are you ready? Here we go. Five, four, three. You got to pick a pose. Two. One and frog. <laughs> ribbit, ribbit, son. Yeah. Did you do the frog? If you did the frog, then you win, man. Way to go. If you didn't do the frog, then you got one more round. Let's see if you can get it. Ooh. Okay, now I did all three. This is a clean slate. What do you think I'm going to pick? <laughs> Five, four. This is the last round. Get in your pose. Three, two. Pick your pose. One. Frog again. Ooh, I bet you thought I was going princess, but uh-uh, I went frog, son. In your face, frogs. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Did you guys do the frog? If you did, great job. If you didn't do the frog, man, still great job. We love you anyway. So there. <laughs> Give yourself a pat on the back. What's that, James? Do the princess one more time? Just for you. You're welcome. All right, man. Good job, pork chops. Now it is time to move on to our remember verse. We've been reading this verse the last few weeks. Have you committed this to memory yet? I hope so, man, because it is so, so good. So we are going to read this verse together. Put it up now, Miss Gemma. Boom. All right. Here's that verse, pork chops. Let's read this together. Here we go. Now this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. John chapter 17, verse 3. Yeah, yeah, like we've been saying, man, this verse is so good because it affirms that Jesus is the only way to God, man, and that God is the one true God. Good stuff. So really, really, really try to commit this to memory, man. I say this every week, but if you come back in person and have this memorized, then you will get five points for your team. One, two, three, four, cinco. Yeah. All right, let's read this one more time. And this week, I want to hear your best robotic voice. Man, how animatronic can you get with this, John? Let's see it. Here we go. Now, this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, 
John chapter 17, verse 3. Yeah, good job, guys. Man, you got some good robots out there. Way to go. I'm proud of you, little pork chops. All right, little boys and girls, man, way to go. But now it's time to get real. Yeah, man, I am so excited. In order for me to teach you guys the Bible story today, I got three really cool, really attractive, man, funny, just all around great guys, man. I got three friends that are going to help me tell you the story. Now, there's something really familiar about these dudes. I, I can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe you can. I don't know. But trust me, man, these guys, they like the cream of the crop. And they're like the best dudes. All right, here we go. I got the father. I got the oldest son. And I got the youngest son. Yeah. And these guys, man, they're going to help me tell you and say it with me. The Big God Story. <laughs> Our ponder point today is the Father is love. Can you say that with me? The Father is love. Good stuff, man. All right. I'm excited. So today we're going to talk about a story that Jesus told one time. He was talking to a big crowd of people and he told them this, this parable. Have you ever heard that word before? Say parable. Yeah, that's just a fancy word for story, right? And he uses this to illustrate a point. And so this is called the parable of the prodigal son. He says, man, one day there's a dad and he's a good dad and he's, he's been successful. He's got a good amount of money and stuff and he's got two boys, right? He's got two sons, but his younger son one day comes up to him and says, hey, dad, I want my inheritance now. Oof. Now let's pause for a second. Do you guys know what inheritance means? Inheritance means like the money that the, the son would get usually after the dad dies. So unfortunately, when the kid says that to his dad, it's like he was saying, I wish you were dead, man. That's, that's horrible. And the father was, was heartbroken, right? He was so sad, but he says, okay, son, I, 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 I'm going to give it to you, right? And so he gives his youngest son all the inheritance, and then the kid just says, man, peace, I'm out of here, right? And uh, the Bible says that he goes to a, a faraway land, and he's just living it up, man. He's buying all kinds of stuff and just eating, like, all the straight junk food and, and, you know, buying all the coolest toys and video games and everything. But all of a sudden, he realizes one day, oh, no, I don't have any more money, right? And he realizes, man, he just flat broke. And right at that same time, the Bible says that a famine comes through the land. Do you know what a famine is? It means there's not a lot of food to go around, right? And so now this kid has no more money left. He just burned through it all. And there's not a lot of food around. He, he can't get any food. The Bible says that this kid is starving. In fact, he gets a job working on a farm, right? He's, he's working with some pigs and stuff, man. And, and he's struggling and, and he's, he's looking down. And he says, man, these, these pigs have more food to eat than me. That's crazy. I'm a human being, but these pigs are eating better than me, right? And then all of a sudden, man, it's just like, ding, the light bulb goes off. And he realizes, oh my goodness, I'm so silly. When I was with my dad, man, he loved me so much. I always had food to eat. I was in a, a nice big house and a warm bed, but I, I wasted all of that and I, I wanted to go off and do my own thing. Oh my goodness. So he decides to, to go back home. And, and as he's going back home, he, he comes up with this like speech in his head. Like, you know, like when you've done something bad and you got to go face your parents and like you try to rehearse what you're going to say over it, man, you don't have to admit it, but we all know you've been there. Let's, let's be honest. I've been there too. It's no fun. Anyway. So as he's on this, this long journey home, he's, he's going over this speech in his head. He says, all right, dad. I'm so sorry. I've sinned against heaven and you. I don't even deserve to be called your son anymore, but, but maybe you could just hire me as your servant and I'll just, I'll just work for you. Right. And he's, he's going over this speech over and over and over on the long journey back home. Now, a couple days later, he's, he's finally getting to his, his house and, and his dad's kind of got this like big, long driveway. Right. And, and he's at the end of the driveway and he pauses for a second and, and he's praying. He's like, all right, God, just give me strength. He goes over his speech again. But the Bible says that his dad just happens to look outside the window. Right. And he's looking and all of a sudden he sees his youngest son at the end of the driveway. The dad doesn't even wait for his son to get to the house. No, he, he flings open the door. He runs and he hugs him. And he says, oh, praise God, my son, my son, he's back. 
right? The son goes to try to do a speech. Father, I'm so sorry. I've sinned against heaven and you. I don't deserve to be your son, but, but just, you know, hire me as a servant. But the dad, man, the dad doesn't even let him finish the speech. He just says, son, I love you. I'm so happy you're back, right? The dad gives him new clothes and the family ring. And, and then he says, you know what? Let's come inside. We're going to have this big feast. We'll have this big party. We'll get lots of food, right? Like let's, let's order from Pizza Hut or something, man. We'll, we'll cater it. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. All right, now that's a great story, but there's one more character, the older son. Now, the older son, he stayed loyal to his dad, right? He, he never left the house, the farm, right? He's always been working, even when his younger brother went away. And the Bible says that the older son, he comes home after a long day of work, and he sees that the dad is throwing this big Pizza Hut party for the, the younger brother. And he gets a little, a little jealous, maybe a little grumpy, and he sits there and he's like, oof. I can't believe I stay here all this time and I do all this work and, and he just, you know, wasted his entire inheritance but comes back and you throw him a big party. Man, you never get Pizza Hut from me. What's wrong with you, Dad? Right? And so the Bible says that the older son doesn't even want to come in and join the party and he's, he's really upset. He's jealous. So the father comes out to him and he says, My son, my son. I have always loved you. I always will love you. Everything we have here at the house, man, you're a part of it. But today we have to rejoice because your brother, my youngest son, right? He once was lost, but now is found. He's come home. And so we got to celebrate. And so the older son says, okay, dad, let's go. And, and they go in and they, they all eat that, that stuffed crust pizza hut, man. And then they just live happily ever after. <laughs> all right. Good job. So, did you like that story? Did you like my three friends helping out? Yeah, they did a pretty good job, right? I don't know what it is, man. They're, they're just some cool dudes. <laughs> good fellas. Anyways, here's the deal, man, pork chops. I think um, obviously the father in that story is God, right? He represents God, and, and, and God just loves us even though we break his heart, right? And, and even though we have bad attitudes sometimes. But sometimes you and me, man, we're represented as either the younger brother or the older brother. A lot of times we do silly things like the younger brother and, and we take what God's blessed us with, but we waste it and, and we go away from him. And then we realize, oh my goodness, we've been so silly. We got to come back to God. Other times we're like the older brother and we think, you know, God, I'm, I'm trying to be faithful here and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to live for you and love you and that kind of thing. But, but man, I'm just, I'm not feeling it. And, and we get jealous of other people and we start to compare ourselves. And, and again, God's telling us, no, 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 you are my child and I love you. So I just want to encourage you today, pork chops, whatever brother you relate to, either the younger brother or the older brother, man, God loves you so much, right? And that's our ponder point today. Can you say that with me again? The father is love. That's right. The father is love. Man, he loves you. He has a plan for you. He wants you to be with him, right? So I'm going to encourage you, man. Don't be like the younger son or the older son. Instead, just come back to God and be with him, man. Stay in the father's love. Sound good, poor chops? All right, man, that's it. That's all the time we have for in the big God story. So we're going to stop and we're going to pray. I'm going to pray blessing over y'all. <laughs> what do we do when we pray? That's right. That's right. We bow our eyes and we close our heads <laughs> and we talk to God. Let's do it. Dear God, I thank you that you are love. And Lord, no matter what we do or how far we go from you, you will always love us. So God, I pray that we would always have a good attitude and that we would stay with you, Lord. I pray blessings over all my friends in Mountaintop Kids Church, both here in person and online. I pray that you would continue to keep them safe and healthy. And Lord, that they would know without a doubt that you love them. I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. And all my friends in Mountaintop Kids Church said, Amen and amen. All right, good stuff. Here's the deal, man. I know today we talked all about the love of the Father, and that means God, obviously, and that's, that's great. But I also want to encourage you, man, today is Mother's Day. So right after you watch this video or right after you're dismissed from Mountaintop Kids Church in person, man, go up to your mama and tell her you love her. Yeah. In fact, if you're here in person with us, we're going to do a little craft to bless your mama today because it's Mother's Day, man. So I just want to encourage you, 
tell your mom you love them. Maybe do some chores around the house for her, right? Help her out a little bit and be a blessing to her. All right, fam, that's it. That's all the time we have for. As always, if you're watching online, we miss you and love you and can't wait to see you again. Otherwise, ribbit, ribbit, son, it's time to go. Ha ha. Ribbit, ribbit, son. Oh, <laughs>